Thank you for tuning in to the finals of the 2024 Dallas Singles Crokinole Championship, a Tier 3 National Crokinole Association event. In this matchup, we have the Battle of the Marks. Mark Harper from the Greater Kansas City Crokinole Club versus Mark McCleary, the returning defending champion of the Dallas Singles Crokinole Championship. Both these players will be making a great jump in the NCAA rankings and are fighting for that first place position. This should be a very exciting match. Now this finals is being done in the style of the World Crokinole Championship. Players will play best two of three games, each being a race to five points. McCleary to open up first, Harper with hammer, and right away with a very nice 20 solidifying his advantage. See if McCleary can even the cup here. He is able to, keeping a little bit of pressure on Harper. However, another touch 20 opportunity there just lips out. McCleary now taking his time with his shot. Catches a few posts, unable to get the off. We'll see if Harper looks to simply remove the disc or tries to angle in as well. And he does. Wow. Another nice 20. Harper coming in hot to this finals match. McCleary going for a 20 of his own. Just comes up a little bit short. Heavy hanger here for Harper. And angles off a little bit long. No big opportunities here for McCleary though. He's against the hammer and down a 20. He does need something big to happen here. Pushes through his own, catches some posts, and loses both his discs. Harper now making that mistake hurt. Now up two in the 20s cup. Only a few bullets left. McCleary trying to angle in just a little bit off, and it looks like this round with another 20 will be going to Mark Harper. Score going 2-0, to zero, finishing up these last few shots. McCleary gets a uh, practice 20 in there, but inconsequential at this point. Officially now, first two points going to Harper. We see some of these very nice shots. That first 20 right off the bat. This beautiful angle in. And this final backboard. Harper now to start this second round of the first game, opening with a 20. Cleary taking his time, waiting for all distractions to go away before taking his shot. Drains his 20, both players now finding their range. Harper to return. We have ourselves a little bit of a 20s race here. And McCleary, the first to go long. He does have hammer advantage, but now down a 20, has a little bit of work to do. We see Harper trying to keep play on the outside. That's something I noticed in his last match. His defensive strategy is very strong, and I'm excited to see how that plays out in this match. Harper with an opportunity now. Coming up short. However, not that bad of a spot, all considering he's up in 20s right now. Be on McCleary to bring play back closer to the middle. Catches a few posts. Not quite a 20, but no easy opportunities here for Harper. Opting to go up the right side. Leaves a potential touch 20 opportunity here for McCleary, who is taking some time to consider the best route of action. That's something I've really liked about McCleary's play style is he's never really rushing his shots. He always takes the time to uh, calculate what his best move should be. Leaving a backboard here for Harper, which he converts on. Now up two in the 20s cup. McCleary coming up short. This time, Harper will be content just to keep play away from the center. He doesn't seem terribly happy with that, but also not the worst situation. It'll be on McCleary to bring play back to the middle. Harper now going for that center disc. That, that one in the back would be hard to get to at this point. Inconsequential. 
Harper will also be taking the second round. McCleary finishes it up with a nice 20, but again, Harper with another 20 in stock will be going up 4-0 to zero in this first game. Lots of momentum going behind him now. We will see if Harper is able to seal the first game in this best two of three. Harper with Hammer in this third game. McCleary taking a second to uh, rehydrate himself before this shot. Leaving a potential touch, although Harper, oh, catches a post. Looks like he was hoping for a backboard there, but catches that closer post to him, leaving an open 20 opportunity here for McCleary. Comes up short on it, leaving that touch opportunity now for Harper to take advantage of. Looks like he might be lining up for, okay, yep, he's trying to push an angle through, maybe a double, got at least one off, and a little bit of a messy situation here for McCleary. He'll want to be careful not to lose his own disc that is in the 15. Again, McCleary is battling against the hammer, currently not in the worst spot with two discs on the board. But Harper with a backboard opportunity now. Not quite able to convert, but still in a decent position. The other thing to note is as McCleary loses one of his discs is Harper would be content with a tie. That would get him to the five-point mark, sealing him the first game of this match. McCleary pushing in, gets in front of that post. We've seen him get that nice spot a few times before in his match with Joshua Malloy. Bit of a finicky shot. It's not snug against the post, but if you go at that the wrong angle, looks like Harper's going extremely wide, a little bit over the center, and very nice. Leaves his disc smack dab in the middle of the laneway. It'll be very tough for McCleary to bring play back to the center here. A follow through is technically possible, but very tough with the positioning there. And yeah, it seems like he's not quite hidden behind that post. A little bit of a finesse shot here, but Harper is able to get it. Very nice. Down to the last two shots. McCleary will need a 20 here to put substantial pressure on Harper. He gets the off. It's a little bit behind the post. Harper just needs to hit and stay on the board to seal this first game, which he does. That brings the score 6-0. to zero. Harper takes the first game by a full wipe. That'll be a lot of momentum to go in with to the second game. We reset the points now. If Harper wins the second game, he will be the Dallas Singles champion. As we talked about in our introduction, Mark McCleary is a returning Dallas Singles champion looking for his second title of this tournament. But Harper is not giving him an easy path to that. Being up now in the 20s, McCleary does have hammer, but at a 20s disadvantage, will be looking to most likely roll back in. Has a hit and stick. Doesn't leave an easy shot here for Harper. Does look like there's a line, and he does get it. Just staying on the board. Oh, very nice. He could have angled in, and if he were confident about the 20, could have, but leaves that in a very not nice spot. Harper does very well going half over the hole just catching that disc he does lose his shooter giving an uh, open 20 opportunity to McCleary here who goes long on the shot Harper now very nice roll away just tucked in front of that post so McCleary won't be able to roll in off this Pushes through. Harper will be content to uh, keep play on his side of the board. Beautiful spot. And McCleary might have wanted to take Hogan's alley there, but 
And Harper pretty much seals it with that shot. Up two in the 20s cup. Shots inconsequential now. Harper will take the first round of the second game. Two to zero. See this nice defensive play from McCleary. That did offer some trouble for Harper. But again, Harper's been great at punishing people when they make mistakes and leave an open board for him with those open 20s. That's uh, certainly one of the most important things about open 20s. Not just how many you can shoot in a row, but if you're able to readjust mid-game from hit and sticks, hiding, to having an open board, can you hit that open 20, yes or no? And for Mark Harper, that has been an astounding yes through all of his matches. Do not leave Harper with an open 20. Have a bit of a 20s race going on now. Each player at three shots. I believe this is the longest 20 race we have seen in this match. McCleary now with half his discs. And Harper, the first to miss, going long. Not leaving an opportunity here for McCleary. Oh, and doesn't get the off. Catches a post there. He did keep his on in in bit of an awkward spot. Harper, mistake out of him here. McCleary could put himself in a very nice spot if he's able to get the off here. One of his discs between the pegs, and it kind of depends where he leaves his other one, but certainly very nice, especially being against the hammer. Rolls away, and it's off. Yep. That disc here, we'll see if Harper can get it on the second attempt. And he does, but goes a little bit long. McCleary will most likely be looking to pull play back a little bit further. Harper might be able to come in off this. I'm not sure. That is it's going to be a tight squeeze. That It might just be a bit too tight. Yeah, Harper catches a post there. Good attempt. You see him trying to carve back in, but that post in the way loses his shooter. And McCleary really makes it hurt, sealing this second round of the second game, bringing the score 2-2. Two to two. First points that McCleary has gotten in this match. See him just absolutely ruthless with those open 20s in that initial 20s race. Harper to start, finding his range, and McCleary taking a second to energize. Gotta respect that players are keeping their drinks well away from the uh, playing table. Us at Tracy Boards do appreciate that, fellas. Thank you very much. And McCleary misses his open 20. Harper, not quite enough push, leaves a nice backboard here for McCleary. We will see if he is able to convert. Not quite. Rolls away. Not the worst. McCleary, actually... Yeah, McCleary does have hammer, so he does need to make something happen here. He is down in the 20s, so tries to catch a post to bounce back. Goes a little bit long, but play is on his side of the board, so we'll see how this pans out. And Harper goes a little bit strong, loses his shooter. McCleary now could even out the 20s cup, which he is able to do. We are down to a four-shot game, and Harper goes long. That could hurt in this late stages of the game. We'll see what McCleary does. If he tries to pull it back off one of the posts. Yep, he caught the post a little bit. Not completely out of there. Harper can still bring play back in the middle, but not a gimme. Taking his time, and he does a nice job to roll back. Now there could be a potential drop back 20 opportunity here for McCleary and McCleary does have hammer so he doesn't need the 20 necessarily as long as he doesn't set Harper up for anything super nice oh does not get the off now this could be a slightly messy situation those discs are very close to each other Harper will have to be careful with this shot does a nice job of removing McCleary's disc without losing his own. Two in the 15 now. Cleary will be looking to uh, clear up some of this. Gets a nice double. Down to the last shot. Harper needs an off and a 20 here. At the very least, the off to make McCleary shoot. The 20 to put any 
significant pressure on McCleary. He's looking at his angles. I'm thinking it's most likely going to be a follow-through. The touch wouldn't quite do it. He gets the off, not the 20. McCleary still needs to shoot. Looks like there's a nice laneway to get that off. He is taking that time because there is a post there. And yes, McCleary will take this round, bring the score 4-2. to two. McCleary now with a lead in this second game. See that very nice double. McCleary now to open the fourth round of this second game. Scoring a 20. And Harper going long. McCleary is in decent position now to... He might have been trying to follow through there. There is potentially a drop back here. It does look a little far. We'll see if Harper is able to convert or not. He does have hammer down a 20. So wouldn't hurt to have that 20. Catches a post. Doesn't get the off. That does hurt. That is the risk of going for any kind of touch 20. You kind of need to be confident on it because if you don't convert, you uh, put yourself in a pickle. That being said, his disc is nicely posted. McCleary opts just to touch it and leaves what could be a backboard here for Harper. Harper unable to convert. Getting a bit of a messy board now, and things could be interesting. McCleary will be pushing that one disc through, and oh! Such aggressive damage. Accidentally demotes one of his discs. On the upside, McCleary does have a lot of discs in play, so that demotion shouldn't hurt him too bad. Play, for the most part, on his side of the board. Harper will probably be going for a double here. Loses his own shooter, probably for the best. At the very least, there will be... McCleary's forced to shoot to the center now. That will get played back to the middle rather than on the outside. Unless McCleary can bounce his disc back. And oh, an unfortunate catch of a post. <laughs> on the outside, Harper's forced to still play on the outside. Oh, and another unfortunate mistake. Right back to where we are. To where we were two shots ago. Players having a chuckle about uh, their respective mistakes. Taking a second to uh, get their head back in the game. And clearing now, play is back in the center, and that's what Harper will be going for. Not a super nice leave. He can definitely get that off, but he'll want to keep his in the 15. I'd say go for a 20, but it looks like his own disc may be interfering. Actually, surprisingly close. You see it lipped out there. Perhaps if his own disc wasn't in the way, that'd be there. But uh, McCleary tried going for an off there. Lost his own shooter. But uh, again, Harper shooting on the outside. McCleary is up 20. And as it stands with that one blue disc on the board, Harper doesn't have quite enough to uh, win this round. And oh! Oh! Dagger. McCleary seals his win of the second game in this best of three. We're going into the third game now. We see that replay of damage. We also see this final 20 from McCleary that guaranteed him the win. We are into the third game now. McCleary to open. Now this is this is intense. Both players have won one game each. It'll come down who can win this final game. McCleary went long on his first open 20 attempt. And Harper with a very nice roll away there. Again, we've seen Harper do that a lot of times. He did that a lot with uh, Joshua Malloy. And yeah, the defensive strategy, I got to give kudos again to uh, the representative from the greater Kansas City Crokinole Club. If you haven't checked out that club, make sure you do because... Uh, they're doing fantastic stuff down there. Harper with a off, but potentially a touch 20 opportunity here for McCleary. And he gets it. Very nice. A little bit of a fist bump on that one. 
Harper does have hammer, but he's down in the 20s cup. And McCleary is content, it seems, to keep play on the outside. Harper might be forced to peel here. Not 100% sure at this point, and McCleary can pull this much further back than Harper will have to peel to force McCleary to shoot for that center disc. McCleary does seem to be considering his options. Since Harper has hammer, if uh, it remains as this, one of the 15, and oh, an unfortunate miss. Has a little bit of a chuckle there. Harper to himself, that's all you can really do in those situations. The uh, best thing you can do is a uh, after a bad shot is just shake it off. Cleary debating the best way to take on this disc in the 15. Rolls away a little bit. That could be beneficial to him now that there's not that two blue disc situation on the board. Harper will be forced to play to the middle now. Able to catch that. Wow, I did not think he was going to get that. That was a very thin line. Rolls it back to not a gimme shot here for McCleary. Going through the post now. Loses his shooter. Probably smart. Harper doesn't have many options here. Definitely forced to peel. Yep. Now, if McCleary can score this 20, he will guarantee the win of this first round. Goes long. If Harper can get a follow through, he can at least tie this round, bring the score a one to one. We'll see if he is able to do so. Taking a second. Oh, unfortunate. Sticks a little bit in the spot. See this very nice touch 20 from McCleary. This first round of the third game will go to him, bringing the score 2-0. to zero. Harper to open up this second round with a 20. Finding his range now. Oh, and going long. Looks like Harper will be going up the side. Might be looking for a touch 20 here. Doesn't quite get it or the off. McCleary with hammer, certainly not a bad spot for him to be in if he can push that into the 15. Doesn't get the off, but that far back disc is uh, in a bad spot. Harper opts to hit and stick on that far side there. This is definitely a good position for Harper to be in. He is against the hammer, but up at 20 with Two discs on the board. McCleary might be forced to peel here. I don't think he can really angle in, and I'm not sure. Yep. Yeah, he peels on that outside disc. Now Harper is forced to shoot to this far side. Worst comes to... I was going to say worst comes to Harper misses, and McCleary has to go for that far one. But now he has something to work with to uh, angle back in. This could uh, uh, also turn into a battle of uh, who misses first on these... Far side shots. Harper has a laneway from the outside. Very nice. McCleary now with another opportunity to try to carve in. Now, I'm not sure if he could catch the post on that far one there. It looks like that's what he'll be going for. Catches the post, but a little bit too strong. Loses his own shooter, leaving an open board opportunity here for Harper, who... Comes up short, but definitely not displeased with that. Doesn't give McCleary a lot to work with. That disc closer to him, there might be a post in the way for a clean angle in. And that far one is just in enough. Be a little bit hard to catch it post cleanly. McCleary, McCleary hits and sticks. And Harper loses his shooter on that shot. Again, not the worst. Harper is still in good position. Cleary needs some kind of 20 or a really nice hide. But I'm not sure how he's going to make either of those happen. We'll uh, see what he does here. Bounces around and does leave that in an awkward spot. This could be good. Harper needs to get this off. 
Oh, that's still in the 10, which means McCleary could hit and stick in the 15 and win this round. That is unfortunate. If he'd even gotten it to the 5, McCleary might have been able to tie or a lot more pressure to get a 20. Oh, and a 20 with it. Did not need it, but still takes it. You see, ah, yeah, you see that little smirk. He knows that was good. He knows that was a nice shot. McCleary gets the victory from the jaws of defeat, taking that second round. 4-0 to zero now in this third game. McCleary is one tie away from winning the title, his second title, of Dallas Singles Crokinole Champion. McCleary now to shoot. Harper does have hammer in this game, so McCleary at a slight disadvantage in this round. Might be able to get a touch 20 here. Hits it and rolls away a little bit, not leaving a lot for Harper here. He could angle in. Looks a little bit tight, and he almost gets it. Just a little bit strong. On the upside, there's not a lot for McCleary to work with here. He could go for a follow-through, but those are never a gimme. At the very least, he wants to make sure he doesn't set Harper up for anything. Oh, loses his shooter. Harper stays on in an open 20 opportunity. And as we've said before, Harper is always one to punish people who leave him with an open board. McCleary now, a lot more pressure on him. Loses his shooter again. See if Harper can really seal this advantage. And he does up to 20s with the hammer. Cleary has a lot of work to do now. Keep in mind, there is also a lot of pressure on Harper here. He cannot accept a tie. He needs to win. He certainly can't take a loss. Backboard opportunity here. He gets it. This round is pretty close to over. He's not mathematically out of it with that 20. He needs two more 20s for even an opportunity to tie. And if Harper gets another 20, then it is certainly game over for this round. Very nice shot from Harper. Doesn't leave McCleary a lot to work with. No 20 there. If Harper gets this disc off, that will guarantee... Oh! Doesn't get the off, but again, 220 advantage. I believe, mathematically... Harper has won this round. Yes. So Harper will take the third round, bringing the score 4-2. to two. And we see, again, Harper punishing his opponents for leaving him an open 20 opportunity mid-game. We are in the fourth round of this final game now, and Harper comes up short. McCleary, to adjust, will most likely be content to hit and stick. Catches a post and rolls back a little bit. No great opportunities here for Harper. He might be able to angle in, but doesn't look super clean. And oh, a little bit wide, a little bit strong. Loses his shooter. McCleary could really make this hurt now if he can score an open 20. Taking his time with this shot. And goes long. Again, in such a long game, the uh, pressure definitely builds. On one hand, you have Harper, who can't accept a tie right now, certainly not a loss. You've also got McCleary, who is one round or even a tie away from a win, which can be very intimidating. So, players definitely slowing down their pace of play now. McCleary with hammer, no 20s yet, but could soon have three discs on the board. And with a hop, skip, and a jump, that disc goes off. McCleary is in a good position right now. Potential backboard opportunity here for Harper, which doesn't get him out of the doghouse, but would be very nice to have at this stage of the game. Gets it. Very nice shot. McCleary now can keep the pressure on if he scores a 20. Goes long, but certainly not the worst. Right now, 
At worst, if that one disc is on the line, that's 35 points on the board. And, oh! Harper, with an unfortunate mistake, drops a 20 for McCleary. On the upside, his shooter was left posted. But again, McCleary could just tap that, have a disc on the board, and be in fantastic position. A very big mistake. Especially this late in the game, Harper has quite a bit of work to do now to make up for that. This is quite also quite an interesting uh, layout as it stands. Harper is considering his options. As the board sits right now, McCleary is up five points total. Harper could be going for a follow through here. That's pretty much what he needs. Unable to. Gets a little bit of a push, but not quite enough. Now, McCleary can get a double here. He'll be in fantastic standing. But the biggest thing for McCleary right now is to not set Harper up with any opportunities. Taking his time. Looks like he's going for that further back disc. Okay, the double. He tried to go for the double. He got one off and demoted one all the way to the five. Very nice shot. Looks like Harper's going to push through again. Pushes up, not all the way into the 15. We are down now. Should be only one more shot left for Harper. A little bit behind on the scoreboard there. And McCleary, very nice spot. I mean, yeah, not a lot here. I'm thinking the best Harper has is a double and then maybe angle to bump his own into the 20. But this is a very, very tough spot for Harper. See what he's able to do. Looks like at the very least he's lining up for that double. Oh, misses. That is all but it that seals around and gives McCleary his path to victory for his second title and first time defending as a Dallas singles Crokinole champion. Very great match between these two great players and Mark McCleary is your second time Dallas singles Crokinole champion. Thank you again for tuning in, and we have tons more Crokinole action coming your way as September is absolutely loaded with tournaments. First up, we have the Crokinole World Cup singles and doubles happening in Budapest, Hungary. This is a Tier 2 National Crokinole Association event, and coverage will be on the Chevedos Crokinole YouTube channel. I will be doing some of the commentary for those matches, so make sure to tune in. And on September 21st, we have 1, 2, 3... Crokinole tournaments happening. First up, we have the Belleville Crokinole Challenge, a Tier 1 singles tournament happening in Belleville, Ontario. The coverage for that tournament will be on the Tracy Boards YouTube channel, so tune in back here to see those semifinal and finals matches. After that, we have the Brooklyn Crokinole Championship, also September 21st, a Tier 2 doubles tournament happening in Brooklyn, New York. Coverage for that will most likely be on the Brooklyn Crokinole Club YouTube, so make sure to subscribe there to see those matches. And finally, recently announced, we have the Greater Kansas City Crokinole Classic, a Tier 3 singles tournament also happening September 21st in Blue Springs, Missouri. Now, if you aren't tuning in to be watching these tournaments, you better be signing up for them. You can go to the National Crokinole Association website for more information, as well as any of these club pages to see how you can sign up and compete to get your ranking in the National Crokinole Association. Thank you again for tuning in. This is Garrett Tracy from Tracy Boards. Make it a great day.